Hello everybody and welcome back to the show. It is I, Jay, as usual. And as you're all away, and as you can tell, I'm a little really excited. Pre-orders for Wrath and Rapture are up on Saturday. So it's going to be here and it's not going to be long. It's our little Christmas treat from GW saying... Here you go, guys. Get your demon on over the Christmas period. So I can't wait. We've had articles on the Warhammer community page. And they've been explaining the design process. And they've given the name of the Herald with a harp, which is... It's the Infernal Enraptress. Nice. Awkward name for everybody, or as I commonly refer to her, mental bitch with harp. So take from it as you will, but because I done a Blades of Corn style list last week, I'm going to try my best with the with the, the Slanesh girls but I'm gonna be honest with you guys I found this one a little hard didn't feel that there was a synergy within the within the army like Corn has so I've given myself a few CP points because it's such a low points but I did try my best and I just hope it's good enough for you guys. So please let me know what you think of it. Uh, comment, like and subscribe and let's get on with the show. So I'm going to be honest here because we don't know at this time a lot about the, uh, the harpy herself. Um, I'm kind of guessing she's going to be around the points of the mask. So I kind of guessed a 80 points for a herald. Because she does a bit more than the bog standard herald. So you know that harp is going to be um, creating a mosh pit around her. It's going to be probably like the front row of a hymn concert. So, um, I've kind of guessed that. I'm probably going to be wrong. I foresee when we get the book in hand, it's going to be like 120 or something like that. But I'll hold my hand up on that one. So, because I've done that, I've picked just a bog standard Herald. And then it's from the box set of a start collecting and the uh, Wrath and Rapture set, I've had... Two units of ten demonettes. There's a pack of fiends. And we've I've lumped the seekers into one unit of ten models. So it's gonna be a fast hard hitting unit. And I thought, why not? I'm going to you know, I'm gonna have a bit of fun here. And I'm going to have the Exalted Lone Mower, the Chariot of Slanesh. So if you're going to go big, why not go the best? So, like I said previously, there's not a lot of synergies, I feel. Perhaps it's going to be different with the harp. So, this is just a quick attempt. I'm really sorry, guys. I It's... I struggled. So, corn was an easy list, I will be honest. Right. So, let's have a look at uh, War Scrolls. So, why not start at the top? We've got the Herald of Slanesh. Got a movement of six. A 5 plus save, 5 wounds, bravery 10. She's going to hit hard in a fight and she's going to stick about. 
So, the quickly on the weapons now, she got claws, one inch, six attacks, three plus to hit, four plus to wound, minus one to rend, one damage. It's very nice, I feel. I think for one small herald to have six attacks, it's gonna it's gonna be uh, a nice model. She's gonna be running. She's gonna have a bubble in she around her, so I think that's nice. And if this is what's the come for the army, I can't I I might might try these after I get the corn and Arkan list together, but sadly these guys will be on the back burner. On to abilities Right guys to back up all those hits we've got abilities. So I got a feeling she's going to be hitting, out of those six, I'm going to say about four attacks. So, Deadly Grace is going to make this a lot better. Each time you make a roll of six or more on a Herald with the Claws, you can immediately make one extra attack using the same weapon. So, everything's just adding up. Isn't It's, I gotta be honest... Yeah, it's situational because it's sixes, but if she's running into battle, she's going to be throwing quite a few punches. So I think this is a lovely slanish ability. The other one we got is the Quicksilver Dodge. Reroll save rolls for the Herald in combat phase. Again, that's going to mean she's sticking about. So... It's not often you get a reroll, but use it when you can. I think this is amazing, and yeah, I kind of scared going up against a herald. She seems a uh, one crazy lady. Right to back up our herald, we've got two big gangs of lasses, the demonettes of Slanesh. So, movement of 6, like the Herald, 5 plus save, 10 bravery, 1 wound. It's a good thing they come in big packs. Piercing Claw is exactly the same, but this time it's 2 attacks, and it's 4 plus 4 plus to hit the wound, minus 1 to rend, 1 damage. So, these are not going to be as good as the Herald, but they are coming in the pack of 10, once they get in, you think, say the unit, the whole unit survived, that's uh, 20 hits. So, it's not like you're coming out of this, you're only throwing one punch. So, I I, I think this is a nice, nice stat. A nice, a nice a million dollar baby punchy ladies. So, on to abilities. And abilities. They've got so many. I they have got so many. It's let's get into them. It's uh we got the Alures, which is the leader. She makes three attacks rather than two. Always a pleasure having her about. There's the horn blower. Reroll battle shock tests of one for units that are within six inches of the horn blower. And that's your opponent, that is, so they ain't staying about. Icon bearer. Models in this unit uh a model in this unit may be icon bearers. If the model if the unmodified roll for a battle shock test for a unit includes the bearers one, you can add D6 models for that unit. It's gonna be the same as the corn boys. So it's a nice ability. I like that one. Well it's I say abilities. That's the uh the command structure for them. The abilities is what's coming up next. Here's what we got. Lithe and Swift. Demonettes can run and charge in the same turn. That's amazing. That's a lot of ground covered. And you're not sticking about. You're not waiting for the fight to come to you. They can, You will go into them. Fantastic. Graceful Killers. 
Each time you make a roll of six or more with the de demonette's claws, the model can immediately make an extra one attack. Uh, demonettes can make one extra attack with a piercing claws each time you make a hit roll of five or more if the unit contains 20 or more models. So, that is a big buff. So, you've got, on a six, they've got the same as the Herald, so they're getting that extra attack. And then, you've got more of a chance to hit, because like you've got more girls trying to poke you with their claws, if you've got units in attendance. So, if you were going up from Vanguard, and you're trying to expand your units, no point having multiples, I just, I beef them up to the maximum size because you were just getting more and more chances to hit. So that's fantastic. I I know I've been sounding a little bit tired, but reading these rules, I feel invigorated. I can't wait for the pre-order, let alone the, uh, the release. So, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm getting more and more excited just looking at this. But we've got more. It's the Locus of Beguilement. In the combat phase, your opponent must re-roll hits or hit rolls of six or more against a unit of demonettes that are within six inches of any demon heroes of Slanesh. So, you keep your units around your herald. You've got a little extra bubble over there. So, any big hits on a six that's pretty massive to be honest because you th you think how many abilities you've got in your army that says you get extra attacks on a six and if you've got to re-roll every single one of them because of heroes coming close to well i'm sorry it is uh, gonna it's gonna hinder you so, these girls have got to be the mainstay of your army. End of sports. So, guys, we've got our Herald. We've got our battle line. So, let's get into the fast parts of your army. Your cavalry, by the So, we've got your Seekers. You can split these into smaller units. I prefer to have a big mob of these guys. So, let's have a look. Movement 14, because those steeds are fast. There's no stopping them. Two wounds. Five plus save, bravery 10. So, they coming in, they stay in. As per usual, we got the weapons. And the weapons are piercing claws. We all know what they are. Two attacks, four plus, four plus, minus one rend damage. But also, the steeds have got Poison Tongue. One inch, two attacks, four plus, four plus, no rend, but one damage. So, they're hitting just as well as the Demonette on top. So, you know, you, you'll be getting um, half again, say. So, you'll be getting around about ten, I would feel. 10 hits on this unit because I'm 4 plus you got a good chance of missing so still that's going to be a heavy hitting te team demonettes and steeds so let's have a look at the command structure now to see what buffs they give so we got a heart seeker the heart seeker is the leader makes 3 attacks rather than 2 so Again, one more chance to hit. Hornblower does exactly the same thing as it does for everyone else. And the Icon Bearer does exactly the, the same. So, you know, they're coming in, they're going to stay about. And if you're lucky enough to roll out one, this Battle Shark is the only time you're lucky enough to roll a one, you're getting more girls back. So, like I said, I know I I on the other list I done last week, I spread them out a lot more, but I feel Slanesh is 
more suited for a mob. I may be wrong, but I feel the more you put into the units, the more you're going to get out of it, rather than have a lot of little units. I may be wrong. I'm not perfect. I might be missing something. So the only thing I'm going to ask, same as I do all the time, is for you to comment below what's your thoughts and all that. Like, I might be missing one key part here. I'm, 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 like I said, I'm not all okay with the Slanesh. So, can you give me your opinions on how you would change the list, say? So, we can get more out of it. So, now, I'm going to go on to abilities now. So, let's have a look at them. Right, guys, abilities. We got Graceful Killers. So, on a 6, they get one extra attack. We got Quicksilver Speed, a unit of, of Seekers. Runs, roll two dice and add them together instead of rolling a single dice. This unit can run and charge in the same turn. So, like, like the Demonettes, they're going to get to the fight quicker. These ones are going to be outriders for your for your uh, army they're gonna catch the four runners or you can swerve them around the back to like tie up your enemies heavier hitting units so it's a lot you can do with these and the fact that you got a two dice charge is big so don't overlook that and then to add to this, now we've got the Locust of swift Swiftness. Add one to all charge and run rolls of the units of 12 inches of a hero of Slanesh for your army. So, that is amazing. Because, like, if you roll a lot of fours or fives, you're adding one all the time. But that's if you've got a hero next to you. Um, at the moment, I've only said in here that I've got a Herald on foot, but it's completely up to you. Out of these two kits, you may decide that you want to do a Herald on a Steed, which is completely up to you. It's amazing to see people do their own models. So, again, I don't see that in my list meaning a lot unless they are charging past me. So, who knows? And I think I'm going to end this on the chariot. Because in my previous vi videos where I've talked about Wrath and Rapture, I've already gone over the Fiend. The same, I think it's the same one that I did Karnak in. And the, the Flesh Hounds. So I think that's two weeks ago when it's it marked up on one of the Sunday shows where we spoke about Wrath and Rapture. So... Let's get into the chariot. Right. Let's end this video on a high, is it? So, we've got the Exalted Seeker Chariot. Movement of 12, 9 wounds, 5 plus save, 10 bravery. So, the Exalted Lone Mower is coming in. It's quite fast. It's not as fast as the Seekers. But she's staying about with those 9 wounds. So, you know, that's got to be a daunting prospect for your opponent, so... That's just it moving and surviving. Let's have a look at the weaponry that's involved with this chariot. Because it, it just looks amazing, our model. It's just excessively scary, in my opinion. Because can, can you imagine that charging out there when you've got those steeds that, I don't know, they just, the booby snakes or whatever with legs. Booby lizards then. And then you've got the blades... On it, oh, that, that scared the shit out of me, that would. But I digress, let's get on to the weapons. Right, guys, the weapons. We've got the Flensing Whips or Claws. The is 2 inch range, 3 attacks, 4 plus, 4 plus, no rend, 1 damage. So she's got, she's got a lot of hits, but then are you going to be hitting them all with a 4 plus? And then the four plus the wound, it, that's going to make a difference. So she's all right, 
she looks scary. And that's half the battle. Demonette's claws. We already know this. Uh, six attacks, four plus four plus, minus one rend, one damage. Steed's poison tongues, because there's a lot of them. Eight attacks, four plus two, four plus a wound, no rend, one damage. So, if yeah, well, there is a few attacks there. There's, I think, it's seventeen attacks in total. If you, I would say, a third of them was gonna hit. But it's not, still nothing to, to sneeze at because uh, it's, a, like I said, a, it's a lot of attacks for one unit. But then, but a nine wound unit, you want a lot of attacks. So, there's no command structure with this because it is its own little beast. So, let's have a look at the abilities. So, the abilities we've got... The swirling shapes and unholy hues. Your opponent must add one to the results of battle shock test made for units within three inches of the exalted seeker chariots that charge that turn. You, well, they're going to be running in front. Well, the Conan will be impressed. I got a feeling there's not a lot of people that's going to be sticking about, and the ones that are do are going to be running for the hills, Iron Maiden style. We've got Exalted Excess of Blades. After this unit makes a charge move, roll a dice for each enemy model within one inch. On a roll of a four more, the, model unit, the model's unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. So, this is going to be good for your enemy's blob squad. So, if, they've got, if they thought they can march... My, you were army with big numbers. This is going to thin the herd. If you think about it, I know it's a four, but it, you might get a lot of chances to roll fours, and for every and for every four, you get a D3. So, it is a good chance of getting rid of a lot of models. Not every time, but there is a good chance of it. And Deadly Grace... Each time you make a hit roll of six or more with the model's claws or flensing whips, the model can immediately make one extra attack using the same weapon. So, bread and butter of this army is you get in, you hit, you hope for a six, and you get the extras. It's excessive, in it? It's excessive amounts of attacks. Funny enough, with a unit that likes excess whether it be excessive amounts of tea alcohol bdsm survivor but for all their extra attacks i couldn't find a lot of synergy but i could be wrong again in the comments below tell me what you think am i right am i wrong am i slightly off i don't know but you let me know down below and that's the end of the show. And of course, it's the end of the show. Um, it wouldn't be the end of the show without me doing this next bit. But I'm really sorry, guys. Thank you for watching before I do anything else. It means a lot that guys are coming back week in, week out to look at the videos. Um, I thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I do thank you. I'm hoping to get... Um, a live stream up for the Wrath and Rapture build. Fingers crossed, I will let you know. Um, mostly through Instagram. Um, if failing that, I will be putting up um, videos on how I've painted, say, the Blood Letters or the Seekers or Demonettes or, or even once I finished, I might even do a showcase of how I've done it. Depends on how I'm going to torture you. Because it's not going to be anything special. I, I'm called the noob with a brush for a reason. And it's, you know, it's shocking my painting. But anyway, guys, um, just that, you know, we have got a Patreon page. We have got PayPal. The links are going to be in the, in the notes below. Um, thank you um, for watching again. I'm hoping to 
bring better content at the moment on patreon i've got three tiers at the moment if you want to check them out i don't know how we're going to proceed in future but i am looking to do a blood bowl i was gonna say bat rep but you it's just a game so uh highlight reel possibly and i might well i'm i'm learning age of sigma so you'll have my journey through that as well because let's not forget i'm part of the community i'm trying to come back into it and i'm going to get my head around rules because it's been a while since i played really it's uh, age of sigma has been well on shelf to be honest because i played a lot of blood bowl but as i always say this is the community channel done for the community because of the community so let's make it grow so if you got friends that uh, you know would semi listen to it i'm not saying anybody fully listens to it but give them a link to the show let them know about it let's get this let's get this community growing so yeah that's it i say it every week thank you again um again i wouldn't be here unless it was uh you guys so yeah well I shall see you Sunday for the Sunday show. So, well, I'm just getting overwhelmed. It must be the Christmas spirit in me. It must be the excitement for Wrath and Rapture. A new Karnak model. The harpy. The sexy fiends. It's going to be amazing. But that's all in weeks to come. So, I'll see you Sunday. So long.